Hey everybody, and welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to be talking about Swamp Thing on DC Universe and soon coming to the CW. Hey everybody, and welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Frank Casina. During these quarantine times, I decided it is time to sit down and start up DC Universe and watch those shows. So I went and started the Abby Arcane show. And boy, did it put me to sleep. Abby Arcane is our Oh, wait. Did I say Abby Arcane? That's right. This show is actually called Swamp Thing, even though Abby Arcane is our main character and Swamp Thing feels like a side character? What? Um... So let's let's back up. Let's let's review. But that, I thought of that. Thought I was being clever. This is probably not that clever, but whatever. So Swamp Thing is a show from the DC Universe streaming service. It premiered last year. The entire uh, series, I guess, as of now, is on there. It's ten episodes long, and you can watch it. And I started watching it actually a couple days ago before it was announced that the CW is going to show the first season. I guess this summer or this fall because they're delayed on production for their other Arrowverse shows. Um, so we don't know when those are going to pick up, so they're kind of filling the time with these shows that have already been completed. We also have um, Stargirl coming to CW at the same time as the DC Universe show, so that's also there. Um, so this will be kind of a, a primer if you want to watch it on CW, if you don't watch uh, DC Universe uh, like I do. Or if uh, you have no interest or trying to decide if you have an interest in the show, that's fine. Now, caveat, I'm not a big Swamp Thing fan. I think the most I've read is the Scott Snyder run, which amounts to about 18 issues. I think I've read one issue of the Alan Moore run, which might have been the um, Anatomy Lesson issue, or another one with Constantine. I can't remember. So I've, not, I've read less than 25 issues of Swamp Thing, probably. So I'm not a Swamp Thing fanatic, I'm not a fan, I don't know any of the references, I just know Scott Snyder's run, and this show seems to be steeped in what that was, even though it's used very sparingly and maybe they were using it for like season two or something like that, uh, as hopes, you know, because a little bit is sprinkled here, a little bit sprinkled there, but overall they don't get into any of it. And that would be my main problem with this show, is that line right there, that sentence is, overall they just don't get into any of it. They, te they spend 10 episodes sprinkling in a mystery here, a mystery there, and stuff is wiped aside or, you know, finished or whatever in a way that's not satisfying at all. In fact, I feel like you spend more time, instead of like the way Smallville or Flash works, where typically it's like a monster of the week for Smallville, or on Flash it's a problem of the week or villain of the week kind of thing, and... You know, sometimes they tie into the overarching story and sometimes they don't, but there's always that B or C plot of the overall villain, like, moving along, at least in Flash. Um, and Arrow worked the same way as well. And then Smallville was, like, less of that. It was just Villain of the Week, and then you had the interpersonal dynamics that were the, the B and C plot that moved throughout the season. So maybe the, on Smallville, say, it was, like, Clark gets close to Lana, and that was the B or C plot throughout all, you know the season that carried through show to show to show that you had to watch them in order to get kind of you know caught up on it whereas flash is much more linear like you have to watch one before the other because they all kind of lead into the next one um so this show i guess the main thing is like the the inner character relationships and stuff like that and the actual plot of each episode the problem or whatever or you know maybe it's not an episode i think it's more like episode arcs even though it's not clear, um, is kind of on the back burner a lot of the time. And there are so many characters introduced into this world that aren't Alec Holland and aren't Swamp Thing that you're left watching this show going, why do I care about these people? There is no Team Swamp Thing, and there doesn't have to be. I know that is the formula that the CW takes on their shows, and this is produced solely by Warner Brothers and the DC Universe, so that's you know kind of a separate thing. Um, it just, that's what I have to relate to it because I've watched a lot of seasons of those CW shows and I do enjoy them for what they are. 
It's just I did not enjoy watching Swamp Thing. I fell asleep a lot, even though I was watching it during the day with the window open, with the lights on. Uh, I watched two episodes last night, and I turned the light out, and I actually saw the episode better. So maybe they're meant to be watched with the lights out, even though I hate doing that at late at night because I just start falling asleep sometimes, especially when the show is like this is shot so darkly. And we'll, we'll get to that. But let's talk about what's going on in the series, which is seems like a whole lot of nothing. Um, you have Abby Arcane, who is the main character of the show, played by Crystal Reed. You may know her from, uh, the only place I've seen her in was um, Teen Wolf on MTV. She was also in uh, some seasons of Gotham. I don't know if she was Silver St. Cloud or Al Ghul or something. I have no idea. I haven't watched Gotham in a long time, so I can't speak to that. But I did really like her in Teen Wolf back in the day. So when she popped up here, I was like, oh good, she's still acting, because I thought she was cool. Um, so she is our main character. She is a CDC doctor, and she is investigating some weird stuff going on in this little town in, I guess, Louisiana called Marais. And uh, it's never really explicitly stated. But anyway, there's a swamp. She meets Alec Holland in the first episode, and by the end of the first episode, he's no longer there. You have the swamp thing. So after that first episode, you're like, okay, cool, we're going to get swamp thing. Here we go. Well, second episode rolls around and you get a little bit of him. Not a lot. The third episode is when he finally says a couple of words. Even though you've only seen a little bit of him as well in the third episode. It's really not until like the fourth or fifth episode where Swamp Thing feels like he might take center stage. And then he doesn't. You retreat back to Abby Arcane and all the side characters that are running around the town. And it isn't until the last two episodes, three really... The ones centered around the anatomy lesson episode, which is kind of like what happens in the comic book there. Uh, no surprise. Um, which is episode 9. And so, like, you know, they kidnap him in the one before. And then he, you know, episode 10 kind of resolves everything and serves as the finale. So there is a lot of Swamp Thing in those last three. But I don't understand why he's not more present in the series as a whole. Um... The suit looks fantastic. I love it. I never had any complaints looking at it. Um, they hired an actor who's very tall and he's big and bulky, or at least the suit makes him look that way. He's very, like, his presence is felt. I thought the actor portraying him, and I can't think of his name, um, I want to say it was like Kane something. I don't know if he's a former wrestler, but he played Jason in the most recent reboot. He's kind of like a horror actor. Uh, playing these big guys in suits and stuff like that. He did a fine job with his line delivery, you know, everything. I, I have no complaints about him. I have no complaints about the suit. If anything, I wanted to see more of him. And the fact that I want to see more of him when there are 10 whole hours of this thing is uh, something I think that speaks to the core of the show and its quality. Where the acting is very good across most of the actors, Crystal Reed's very good. Virginia Madsen is in here. She's very good. There's a couple other actors whom I recognize. Just Jennifer Beals, uh, I think, is the sheriff. Is the, uh, I think it's the character from Fl the girl from Flashdance back in the 80s, which I've never seen, so can't speak to that. Um, but she's the sheriff. She's an interesting character. But there, the problem with this show is that it's called Swamp Thing, but it's all the interesting characters in the town that you spend the most time with. I'd say out of like 42 minutes, you probably spend maybe five to seven minutes with Swamp Thing total in most of these episodes, and that's an unfortunate situation. So I guess my take is if you're going to call it Swamp Thing, call it Swamp Thing. If you're going to call it Small Town Louisiana featuring Swamp Thing, then like if that's what the show is going to be, then find a title to make it that and to clearly tell people like, hey, Swamp Thing is featured, which I guess... I don't know how you would do that in DC Comics because it's really not a small town on which all this weird stuff uh, is focused. If you did want to call this like House of Secrets or House of Mystery and have some creepy house in the middle of the small town and have people come in and out of the house and Swamp Thing be, you know, the, maybe it's on the edge of a swamp and that kind of thing, that maybe would have worked as more anthology type show. I would have been okay with that. But it's not an anthology type show. It's called Swamp Thing. Now, I know there are other people out there who may disagree with me, and uh, like I know Todd McFarlane has been talking about his Spawn movie for ages, 
uh, that he's going to write and direct himself and where he wants it more to be like a monster movie where Spawn is the monster and you don't see him that much. I don't know if that would be interesting. We'll see if it ever gets made. But I know from watching this Swamp Thing show where that is kind of the same thing where Swamp Thing is the monster and you don't see him very much. I don't think that approach works for a TV series. It may work for a movie, but if you're going to work it for a movie, remember like the last two acts of that movie, the monster is killing people, and then the third act, you're either defeating the monster or you see them a whole lot. So I hope that you know McFarlane keeps that in mind for his Spawn movie he keeps talking about. But for Swamp Thing, I don't think that that, even though it feels like maybe they did that with the episode structure, the last two thirds of the season you featured a lot more Swamp Thing in the beginning, I don't think that works because if I didn't want to do a video on the entire season I would not have finished this uh, series. I should have put it down five episodes into it when I was like this is really boring I know already I don't like this and I'm just gonna push through it so I can make a video about it. Um, you know and people were like why do you make uh, negative videos? other channels focus only on things that they like well that's fine you can do that too but I, I like discussing where this where the faults are of things and how they can make it better Jim likes to call me negative a whole lot of the time we're watching this summer game fest thing uh, you know tweeting or and texting and facetiming back and forth before and after these little press conference things and I've been really negative about them so he doesn't want to watch them live with me because he doesn't want to hear me shit on them while he's trying to enjoy it that's fine but, uh, you know, I just like, I guess I focus on the faults more than I do the strong things, even though I have an easier, I guess you would say I have an easier time identifying faults in things than necessarily like recognizing their strengths or maybe talking about the faults than talking about the strengths. Like, I'm saying Crystal Reed is good. The guy who plays Alec Holland is a good actor. He's in it for a few episodes in his human form. He's a different actor than the guy they have in the suit, who's also fine. Um, but I feel like they could have, you know, I am more equipped to talk about the faults in the show, so sorry. Um, so I, I feel like this show really could have been more focused around Swamp Thing, and I, I, I don't really know where it was going. Like, I know I've seen a shot of what was going to be the Floronic Man, which isn't in these first ten episodes. Maybe he was in the, the latter part of the season or season two, whatever. But it, it's unclear. The, maybe the saving grace of this show is that the fact that there's not going to be a season two. Um, so what had happened <laughs> last year when this thing premiered, they released the reviews and the reviews were pretty good based off the first couple episodes. I don't know what they were watching. Maybe they were, maybe they were expecting it was going to get better. But it released to pr really good reviews. And then two, three days later after the reviews came out, after the first episode premiered on DC Universe... They announced that they had canceled the show and that the episode order was getting cut from 13 to 10. And then later on, as we found out, that Warner Brothers did not want to store this giant set that they had built for the swamp. Apparently the swamp is an entire big set that was built for the show and that Warner Brothers didn't want to store it in between seasons and that it was too expensive. Well, okay, fine, but the suit was great. Why didn't we show more of the suit? So I don't know how this is going to work on the CW if the CW is thinking they're going to pick this up if it succeeds. I don't think they can afford it. The suit here is way better than the Hush suit they premiered on Batwoman or any of those shows. It's way more expensive, I think, this show than any of those other CW shows. So if CW is going to foot the bill for season two, expect a big drop in quality for the suit and special effects and stuff like that. Like the special effects here were cinema grade. When you had the vines creeping and moving and stuff like that, they were very well done. And I don't think the CW can pull that off by themselves. So I guess they're just kind of filling some time by showing it on the network. Um, I don't think we're gonna get a season two. I feel like the actors are probably finding other jobs. So if they manage to get all these actors back again, that would be a big feat. But um, don't count your blessed, don't get your hopes up. If you do even like this show, I. I couldn't find a way to like it, unfortunately. Blue Devil's in here for a little bit, and that was cool, except, again, they had a cool suit made for him. You can look at pictures of the entire suit that was made for the show, and it looks really cool and really devilish and scary, 
But did they show it very much in the show? Absolutely not. It was kept to shadows and bl blurry shots and just... The way the show was shot was so dark, and I have a problem with these. I've consistently complained about these shows that are so dark. Um, it's terrible. I think it's an affliction upon everything. If you're going to have a light on, have a freaking light on, but don't dim the light after, on the film after the fact so that it feels more creepy. Like There's people walking through halls, and the, all the hall lights are on, but it's so dim and so dark because of the filter they, they put on it to create this atmosphere of mood that it's like, why don't you just turn the light off if you want it to be dim and dark? This is insane. There's a lot of problems with Swamp Thing in the swamp at night where there are boat lights that are shining down the waterway and usually at night a bright headlight on top of water would reflect light everywhere and it would be pretty bright. But they again, they take that shot and they just dim it, dim it, dim it, dim it, dim it until like the lowest possible setting they can so that you can barely make out that Swamp Thing is there. He's edge lit by green and you can't tell him the difference between him, the tree he's standing in between, and maybe the plant in the corner. And I think that is a, I hate that they do this in TV shows that they just make it so dark to give you this scary feel instead of actually doing it with tension and camera work and story and stuff like that. It, I, I think it's a crutch and I really can't stand it because it doesn't even feel like real life. If you go outside at dusk, you can see fine. If you go outside at night and turn on a flashlight, boom, it's bright, it's there. You can still be creeped out, but you don't have to have everything in these TV shows so dark in a way that uh, you can't see anything. And I think it's a problem for these streaming shows. Like we were talking about the Game of Thrones, um, big battle episode last year where it was so dark and you couldn't see it because everyone was watching it on HBO Go, HBO Now, a streaming service. Same problem here. This is a streaming service show. This was developed for DC Universe, a streaming service. And you know that compression is an issue and all these other things, but yet you're going to shoot this show so dark on a TV that's this big in somebody's living room. Like it's not being shown in cinema. So. I guess my thing is let's stop trying to make these things feel so cinematic and so dark where you're sitting in a dark room and just acknowledge that people are going to be watching this during the day with the lights on, with the kids running around in the back or at their homes with the lights on uh, or in their man cave with the lights on and you, it's just going to hinder the show and I, I really hate this uh, form of filmmaking, I, I can't stand it sometimes. So may, I don't think that contributed to my dislike of the show as an entirety. That was one of my complaints. But I do feel like it wasn't focused. It was disjointed. It felt like it dragged along really slowly. And I never got excited about the resolution of a conflict because I never got excited about the tension of a conflict in any of these arcs at all. Um, so that's my review of Swamp Thing. If I have to give it a rating, it's probably going to get two out of five stars only for the production design and that monster suit that they built for Swamp Thing was really, really cool and really well done. So I'll give it for that, but I think you can pass on this on the CW if uh, if it comes on or check it out a couple episodes. But I, I this is not something that I would get the DC Universe streaming service for in particular. Um, so good thing I have other things I want to watch on there because this wasn't doing it for me. So thank you guys for watching. As always, we will see you guys next time in the funny pages. Like, comment, share down below, and let me know what you guys thought of Swamp Thing. We will see you guys in the funny pages.